So I've gotten a few questions about my bikes. Are all of these bikes mine? Do I still have the Honda? Where did the Tiger come from? So here is the breakdown of all of my bikes in order of when I got them and why I still have them. <laughs> My name is Amanda Zitto and I own six bikes. Five if we're not counting mopeds, but why wouldn't you count mopeds? They are so much fun. So an itty bitty backstory. I started riding in 2011 because I couldn't bring my horses to Oregon. And also because it was a lot cheaper to ride a motorcycle from Portland, Oregon to Montana and back instead of driving my Oldsmobile. And I was doing that a lot. I took the MSF course in Montana in October. It was cold. AF. I don't recommend doing that. Um, and when I got back, I started riding my grandpa's 1979 Suzuki GS 750. And I rode that for about a month and I dropped it in front of his house. And I felt really awful about it because it wasn't my bike. And that's kind of when I decided that I need to get my own. A lot of people made comments about how, wow, isn't a 750 kind of big for a girl to be learning on? And I would definitely disagree. I think that was the best bike for me personally to learn on. It had a lot of character. Which brings us to my very first bike, my 1980 Suzuki GS850GL. Her name is Lazarus. If you have been following my channel for a while, you should be familiar with Lazarus because I did most of the pilgrimage on her. I purchased Lazarus for $600 cash in Missoula, Montana in the dead of winter in January 2012. I uh, insisted on test riding it and it took all three of us, my, my dad, the guy that I was buying from, and me to push it out of the snowy alleyway and we dropped it twice. But my test ride was successful. I went over two patches of black ice and didn't die. And I thought that was kind of a sign. When I was asking the gentleman about the bike's history, I found out that he was the second owner. The first owner was actually a preacher who had gotten an accident and broke his leg or something and decided that God didn't want him to be riding and the bike had two Jesus fish on the side of the tank. And I asked him what he'd been calling it, and he said the Jesus bike, and I kind of decided that wasn't a really great name. So I settled on Lazarus, which is a resurrection story from the Bible. And it has been very fitting. Uh, she has died and come back to life more times than I can count. <laughs> I'm so grateful to have had such an old bike as my first bike because I learned so much. I learned how to pull apart carburetors and put them back together. I learned not to be quite as tentative about pulling the bike apart to troubleshoot issues that I was having. And it may sound really cheesy, but I just feel like I have a very solid connection to Lazarus. Moving on to the next bike, my 2005 Honda Shadow 750 Spirit. His name is Hephaestus. My dad actually gifted me this bike when I graduated college. He traded a four-wheeler for it. I also think that he just kind of wanted me to have a bike that was a little bit more reliable than Lazarus. The face just got his name because when my dad was unloading it by himself, he dropped it just right. So there's a big old dent in the right hand side of the tank. And for those who don't know, Hephaestus is the Greek god of metalworking and fire. And he is also malformed as he is described in a lot of texts and it just kind of fit Hephaestus really well. He has like this big old dent in the tank and I thought about replacing it, but it just gave him so much character and the replacement tanks that I found for that particular shadow were even more destroyed and they wanted a ridiculous amount of money for it. So I just kind of settled for my small dent in my tank. The Honda Shadow just came into my life at a really great time because it allowed me to stretch my legs a little bit more than I had been. It allowed me to kind of ride outside of my comfort zone in terms of miles because I wasn't worried about the bike breaking down at any time. <laughs> Currently, Hephaestus lives with my dad in Montana. After I started riding and my brother started riding, uh, my dad got two bikes that needed a lot of attention and weren't really uh, safe to ride. <laughs> So when I finished the first leg of the pilgrimage and s switched bikes in Montana, I just decided to leave Hephaestus there so that my dad would have something to ride. In that way, Hephaestus is getting ridden, uh, he's getting attention given to him, and he's not just sitting in my garage while I ride everything else. Moving on to my next bike, which is a 1972 Honda CB135, whose name is Paul Bunyan. It's kind of ironic because it's such a small bike, but it more refers to how huge of a project this bike is. I didn't buy Paul Bunyan. He has been actually sitting in a field on our property for a very, 
very long time. I don't even think anybody remembers where this bike came from. But to keep it short, he is my project bike. I think that everybody should have a project bike. And this is like the mother of all project bikes. He essentially needs to be stripped down to the frame and he needs a new wiring harness. There's a lot of stuff missing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to pay a lot of attention to him because I've kind of been putting a lot of effort into trying to get Lazarus running again, which has been a slow project in itself, just trying to get the money for parts to make her run again. So Paul Bunyan has had to take a second place in line for my attention. <laughs> Moving on to my 2016 Honda CB500X. His name is Briarios Hecatoncharis. Briarios was an amazing gift to me from my Papa Pete after the pilgrimage. This is the one that kind of showed up out of nowhere at the end of the pilgrimage. My Papa was kind of on a rampage to try to find me a bike that was better suited for going off road and doing these long distance kind of travel things than Lazarus was at the time. Briarios is actually reference to a anime called Appleseed, but also some Greek titans, the Hecatoncharis, who were monsters with a hundred arms and there were like three of them and one of them was named Briarios but I joked around and called Briarios my cyborg boyfriend because he was the first bike that I've owned that had fuel injection and a digital dash. I rode Briarios off-road for a whole year totally stock. I didn't do anything to the bike besides like add a phone holder and some heat grips. I end up with the nickname Street Tires for quite a while from my first p and dual sport ride that I did uh, with the original stock tires on the bike. <laughs> but for everybody who keeps asking, yes, I still have Briarios. I love him very much. You can tell because he has 14,000 miles on him or something like that now. I, when I got it, it had zero miles on it. So you could say that he's been well loved. I had planned on getting the Rally Raid kit for Briarios one piece at a time because it's a lot of money. Something else happened which kind of put a wrench in my plan to build the Rally Raid kit for my Honda. Which brings us to my next bike, my Triumph Tiger 800 XC, whose name is Astraeus. And he is well and truly my adventure bike. I bought Astraeus from my work in November 2017. For those who don't know, I work at a Harley Davidson and Triumph dealership, so I got a really good deal on him. And my boss had been kind of pestering me about getting a Tiger anyway, so that I could represent the brand on store rides like Carl's Mystery Ride. It just so happens that we got in a used Eagle Rider bike that was in really bad shape. They had lost the oil plug and put a wine cork in it so that stuff wouldn't fall into the oil. The clutch was broken, the hand guards were falling off, and I just kind of looked at it and I was like, that one, that one is mine. So I got a really, really great deal on it, but I do have a loan on the bike. It's the first vehicle that I've ever owned that I had to pull a loan out for, but getting a bike that was pretty much ready to go off-road instead of having to upgrade it myself was really amazing. The Tiger has WP suspension included, and since it was an Eagle Rider bike, it already had engine guards and a radiator protector, and the 21-inch front wheel has made a world of difference. It just eats up potholes like nobody's business. <laughs> and it is a little bit more top-heavy than the Honda, but I found that that seems to work in my favor when doing twisties. <laughs> all in all, it's just been a really incredible bike and I love the Tiger very much. It's become my go-to bike for long hauls especially because it handles highway speeds a lot better than the Honda does. Don't get me wrong, I've done a lot of long distance travel on the Honda and I still really love it. I still think that it's a really comfortable bike, but the Triumph Tiger vibrates a little bit less when you're going about 70 miles per hour on the highway. The Honda is a fantastic bike for like under 60 like back highways and that kind of stuff and when you're trying to make time it's hard to avoid the freeway <laughs> last but not least is my bad of moped that I purchased from my brother last year his name keeps changing I want to name him Icarus because he kind of looks like he flew too close to the Sun <laughs> my brother on the other hand thinks that its name should be Daedalus so sometimes it's Daedalus sometimes it's Icarus it depends on the day and if I remember or not I don't have a lot of things to say about the moped right now because I've owned him for such a short amount of time. Right now I'm battling with the clutch plate trying to get it to sit so that it catches when it needs to and not when it shouldn't be. But it's been really really fun. Like the little bit I've gotten to ride it, it's just been super fun. And if you didn't see in one of my other vlogs that my brother switched the throttle on it for me so that I could ride it left handed. <laughs> 
yeah, so that's all of my bikes. <laughs> I wanna give a huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters and everybody who has been sending me money on Ko-Fi. If you would like to support my content for as little as $1 a month, you can support me on Patreon and get early access to videos like these. If that is not your jam, I have links down in the description for my Redbubble and my Etsy shop where you can purchase originals, prints, t-shirts, stickers, whatever your heart desires with my motorcycle art on them. If you can't do those things, just know that I really appreciate you just watching my videos. Thank you for being here. If you have any questions about my bikes or my opinion of them or how they've handled for me on and off-road, please leave your questions down below. And if you don't have questions, please share with me if you have more than one bike and what they are. In the meantime, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you later. The cab door is coming, you guys, and I am so not ready. Oh my God. Uh, I've been binging the movie on Vimeo and taking notes and comparing what I'm seeing on the screen to my paper map. And I'm just like, this is going to be a lot. So far, I think there's only one section that I probably won't be able to do. That's because they kind of emphasized in the movie and on the paper map that it's kind of expert only. And I don't really think I'm there yet. I'll probably be skipping that section. But overall, I think the other parts will probably be challenging, but I think that I can do it. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm excited to be on the road again. Just yes. <laughs>